Alf, why is everybody selling their sports cards? Uh. Today we're going to talk about four reasons why I think people opt to sell their sports cards. We will dive right in. Stick around. going on sports card hobby family on the eve of the national i will be driving out tomorrow night i'm pumped to see all of you all and probably doing blair witch project style vlog stuff that's probably going to be very inadequate compared to what you're going to see from the jeff wilson's and the mojos and all the you know all of the camera crew stuff that's going to be there i won't be that but i'll be there for you you take the card and put it in the sleeve. Before I get started, huge thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com. 35 million plus cards in the database. Buy and sell with ease. It's so easy to shift around inventory. You can grade through ComC. You can run auctions at ComC. It's the Disney World for card collectors. So check out my links down below to get you started. Also, if you're not going to the National, check out Hakes Auctions. Hakes Auctions has got about seven, eight days left in their July auction, and it is loaded. I know a lot of my viewership, they collect sports cards, but they also collect non-sports, entertainment cards, and a lot of pop culture stuff. Hakes is absolutely loaded. Their site is really easy to go on and just pick. You want to look at Ninja Turtle stuff? Easy. Thundercats? Easy. He-Man, Masters of the Universe? Easy. Sports cards? Very easy. Frank, do we have a promo video? I think we've got something, don't we? Some art? Yes. Go ahead. Definitely check out Hakes. All right, why are we selling our sports cards? The first reason is going to, I'm just going to hit the most obvious one right out of the gate, consolidation. Consolidation. I can speak for myself going back, what, it's been six years since I got back into collectibles, the hobby as a whole, and my tastes have changed over time. There are certain things that have not. I always thought Beavis and Butthead was cool. I always thought Stranger Things was cool. I always thought sports cards were cool, but... I guess what I mean is fine tuning that, you know, you can get into certain collectibles and realize, oh man, there's a whole different other variety of collectibles that I might like a little bit more. And also just strategizing on what do you want that collection to look like and what that collection looks like usually changes for people over time. They might be really into something in particular and then they move off of it or they want to add in another kind of subsection of that, of that collection with other things. It's perfectly normal to do so. But what happens, of course, is we don't have endless money and we've got to consolidate some of the stuff and it's making tough decisions on maybe stuff that you bought a few years ago and you're like, you know what? I like this stuff, but do I love it? And for me, I've had to make some tough calls where I'm like, do I need to have duplicates of this? Probably not. I probably need to look into, okay, how can I consolidate and get into another card that I really do enjoy? And that's actually been a fun process. So much emphasis is put on the end game of, of getting that particular card, but really the fun is the strategizing and the planning and the organizing of the collection as you are building it, how it's evolving, adapting, and how you are in complete control of what that is going to look like. You know, this uh, Topps Bo Jackson rookie card. I love this card. This is a childhood nostalgia card. It's in a nine. I could potentially sell this and just get a raw copy and a binder. I could get an 88 top set with this card in it for probably about the same price as what this would be if I sold it. So then I asked myself, do I need this as a graded card or would I rather have the whole set in a binder where I can flip through and look at it for 50 or 60 bucks or whatever that, that is? Those are decisions. I think they're valid decisions. Because look, I'm not retiring off of this card. It's not like I think that in 10 years, the $60 card is going to be $1,000. I love the card, but they're plentiful. They're out there. And so then it's making those decisions and figuring out how do you want this thing to look? And also from a budgetary standpoint, what makes the most sense? Now, there's always a lot of talk about people consolidating many cards to get into one or a few cards. But you know what also happens? Actually, I'm trying to remember which podcast or which YouTube channel I was listening to. 
going back a few days ago, but basically the, the gist of it was, hey, I've got this PSA 10 XYZ card that over the last five, six, seven years has dramatically gone up in price. And then looking at the card, he, he was basically like, you know what? It's sitting in a 10 holder. It's not a great looking copy. Like it could very well be overgraded. It's not a great looking 10. And then the other part is he's up, you know, five, six, seven X on what he paid for it. And then he's saying, you know what? I'm happy to have the same card in a nine and I can take the extra money and get into other cards. And I think a lot of long time collectors or just people that bought in going back five plus years ago. I mean, if, if you bought key cards, not they don't necessarily have to be the most key cards. If you got a lot of just Hall of Fame style players, they're up dramatically going back from five plus years ago. And so I think a lot of people are making decisions like that. I've got this high grade version. Do I sell out of it? Do I sell out of the eight and then just get a three? So I've got a nice copy of it and then I can take that money and do other things with it. And it might be other collectibles. It might be paying off your house or it might be something else. I think a lot of longtime collectors are, are making those decisions. And then even also, you know, people that have been in the hobby over the last few years, again, just kind of consolidation. What's the stuff that you're looking at that you're like, I really want to hold this player long term. I finally decided on it and now I'm gonna make my moves. Very, very fun. The second reason of selling sports cards, and I think this one's kind of, it's kind of funny, but kind of sad as well. We talk about, of course, the huge spike in cards going back to mid 2020 into 2021. And then as we got towards the end of 21, starts kind of making that fall. And so, yes, a lot of money buying and flipping cards, if you're still holding cards, like I had and, and many others, because nobody knew how long that little roller coaster was gonna go for, I would, I'm going to call this one 2021 buys. Why would you sell your cards? Because you finally accepted that, hey, look, maybe it's just never going to get back to that price. I'm going to cut bait. You know, I'm going to take 30, 40% of what I paid for it and just move on. Part of just getting over it too is just taking that L and just moving on and getting into something else. Now, there might be certain cards where you might just want to hold on because you just like the card or you're like, you know what, over the long term, I think that it, it can kind of steadily get back or get closer and you really just love the card. And if that's the case, then, then absolutely. But I think for a lot of people, they've had to make tough decisions on, you know what, it is what it is. Let's just move on and get into things that we really enjoy. And people are always looking at their card collection on how can I move in, in and out to get the things that I want. Because again, not everyone's just taking every paycheck and just zooming it into cards. Some are, I know that some are, but you know, a lot of times you're looking at your existing collection slash inventory and trying to figure that out. And I think for a lot of people, the 2021 buys is what I'll call it. Just the acceptance, the acceptance and moving on. The only way to get over something, to get over something that hurts is just to accept and move on. Third, or thirdly, thirdly, shifting interests. I kind of already hit on this going back to the first couple, but your interests just change. You know, you might, um, I'm just going to pick a modern player just, just to use an example, but, you know, maybe you were really excited about Zion Williamson. You know, maybe you watched him at Duke and you're like, man, I just love the way he plays, just the sheer force of the way he plays. Or John Morant, you know, kind of like that that draft class. Oh man, John Morant is going to be the next guy. I really, really enjoy watching John Morant play. He's just really shifty and just explosive. And now, if you look at those guys, they've just been replaced by other explosive guys. You know, Anthony Edwards has been the guy that he looks like Michael Jordan out there. You know, everybody is just kind of moving on, always moving on to the next exciting guy. And those are good basketball players. You know, Zion and Ja, it's not like they're trash. You know, they're good basketball players, but it might be something where for a year or two years, you're just, you were big into that draft class, excited about it. And now you're like, you know what? I'm all about Wimbenyama. You know, Wimby, Wimby, look at that rookie season. He's exciting. He's seven, four. He can shoot the three. He's got like 20 blocks a game. He's just an exciting player. I'm moving out of Zion and Ja, whatever. And I'm shifting gears and I'm moving over to, to Wemby, to Wembenyama. Or you might be like, hey, you know what? I'm moving into graded comic books. I'm going to go into action figures. I'm going into graded action figures. Shifting interests. You know, a lot of times, too, you're, you're being fed. And by, by me, the whole thing is fed by childhood nostalgia to where, you know, I've been looking at Back to the Future items. Back to the Future items have been something I'm like, you know, it'd be nice to have a cool piece, you know, going back. Just that movie series is so iconic. Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, and just that crew, you know, of actors. I, I love that, that, you know, especially the first and the second movies, of course, they're just all-time classics. They always will be. 
And so just that's an, that's a perfect example of just something like, I'd like to have a piece, you know, from, from that particular IP. What, what do I need to move? What, what do I need to say for? Which item? Which item am I looking at? Am I getting a signed 8x10 by the whole cast? Am I buying, I saw, um, you know, a signed hoverboard, you know, that I was, I was bidding on. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different things. And by the way, that's from Back to the Future 2, the hoverboard thing that he's, that he's kind of riding around in the movie. Signed by Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox. I was like, damn, that's cool. I got to add that in. I lost. But anyway, point being is shifting interests can be a reason why we're all selling sports cards. Lastly, this might be actually the most obvious one. It's just getting out of the card hobby. You're getting out of it. I think for, for me and for others, of course, we're hardcore and we're also doing content around it. So you've got the content piece as kind of an extension of the hobby experience. But for many, I think it's just like golf, you know, to where you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to get my golf game back. I just bought a new set of clubs. I'm going to go see the, the pro trainer down there. He's going to kind of, we're going to work on my swing a little bit. I'm working on my putting game. And you do that maybe for a year, year and a half, you play golf, and then you know what? You lose interest in it and you move on to something else. You're getting into a different hobby. And that's kind of a normal thing that human beings do. Some people, of course, play golf. That's their hobby. They play that for 30 years. Some people, they get into hunting or fishing or whatever that thing is. But, you know, life happens and you might not be able to do it. And I think just people move out of the hobby. And there are people that do liquidate out. I do think, though, I've, I've said it before, we are in a boom time. Even though, yes, do, people do sell and get out, I just think they're being replaced by, by new people that are getting back in. You know, so, but getting out, of course, is going to be one reason why somebody would sell off their sports cards. Let me know, my friends, why do you sell cards occasionally? Maybe you sell one card a year, maybe you sell thousands. Why do you sell your sports cards? All right, my friends, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.